The only thing that keeps capitalism going and keeps the proletariat from sinking into destitution is the fact that when there's a capitalist downturn, it eventually comes back and brings the workers up with it. You get you some jobs. You lose your job, but the, the history of the ten crises since World War II, up until 1991, there were what you call a cyclical crisis, boom and bust. And it's been that way under capitalism. Capitalism goes up with the production, like I said, expands, and it, it outstrips the ability of the masses to consume. It's inevitable. No matter how much you get paid. Even if you everybody's got high wages. It doesn't matter. Production just keeps going until people can't buy it anymore. It outstrips the narrow band of income that the proletariat has. This value that they create by these productive forces eventually gets beyond what the people can pay for and then the thing collapses. But historically, Gradually, after it collapses, they consolidate and they put in new technology and they do this and that and the strong heats the weak and then they re and the inventories begin to go down and down and then the thing starts up again. And that's what the workers are used to. They've been used to this, especially in the Midwest. This was the way it was. There would be layoffs, there would be recessions, the auto workers would be laid off, the parts workers would be laid off, the steel workers would be laid off, but then they would weather the storm and they would, be, they would come back to work. There's no such thing happening anymore. It's a different day. It's, the system has gone over past a certain point. What is that point? The point is that for the last three, three decades, 30 years, they've been crazily putting in more and more technology. They've been destroying the skills so that a whole generation of young people is completely overeducated. Yeah. You can go to school, so what? What's waiting for you out there? McDonald's, Starbucks, Walmart. You don't need all these skills. A handful of people need the skills. I'll get to that later. That's the, the race to the top. That's, where, that's the race to the top, so that they can pick the elite who can be educated so that they have a certain minimum of skilled and semi-skilled workers. But for the broad masses of people, the workers who are in the service industries, that um, my comrade Andrew uh, uh, recited before important statistics. They don't need the skills. The youth are facing, then this is very important for organizers to know what the youth are facing. And black youth and Latin youth are facing it five times worse. I'll get to that too. The bourgeoisie is giving up. Yes, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So, what has happened is that, uh, actually this began in 1991. I don't want to get into too many details. But 1991, after the Bush, uh, the recession of 1991, was the first time in the post-war period that capitalism had a jobless recovery. It lasted about, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 months. They were still losing jobs while the economy was coming back. In the year 2000 to 2004, the second one happened. It was much worse than the first one. They lost 600,000 jobs in the first, I guess, 24 months of the recovery. They lost 600,000 jobs. Now this crisis is so much worse. It's the same, but it's much, much worse. You have now got the bubble burst in the housing market. In August, in August 2007, and that started the financial crisis, which started the economic crisis. 
Do I got that right, Jeff? Since then, it's almost, it's the, going into the fourth year. And there's been 12 months of capitalist recovery. Profits been going up. Profits been going up all over the place. The capitalist class right now is sitting on $1.8 trillion in cash. $1.8 trillion in cash. That's not being invested, that's in their accounts. But there's 15 million unemployed officially. I went through the numbers before. Last August, they claimed that the private sector created 67,000 jobs and were all supposed to jump for joy. Where are they living? What are they smoking? Yes. <laughs> 30 million people underemployed and unemployed and they're going to get up and cheer the great green shoot of 67,000 jobs created by the private sector while they laid off 140,000 government workers from the yep. census. That's right. So they had a net loss of jobs. <laughs> the auto industry, if you all Michigan people, is growing that they put on 55,000 new jobs this year. They, they leave out this part. They laid off 324,000 people last year. In the year before the bankruptcy, the oil industry laid off 324,000 workers. And we're supposed to cheer because they got 55,000 workers back. Now, of course, we fight for every job. And we don't scoff at any worker getting a job back. And we think that that's great for those 55,000 workers. But we also think about the hundreds of thousands of auto workers who have been permanently replaced. And about the new generation that's coming in at $14 an hour with piddling benefits and a leadership that's making every concession imaginable to manage. We think about them too. So, where am I going with this? The point is that there's a capitalist recovery without a dent in huge mass unemployment, the biggest mass unemployment since the Great Depression. And there's, the only reason it's not worse is because the capitalist government, the capitalist state, Washington, the Federal Reserve Board, the Treasury Department, and the Obama administration, and before him the Bush administration, came to the rescue of the capitalist class, to rescue their own system. As a, a, there's no justification for them anymore. They have no role in society. They can't even, on a capitalist basis, make it go forward. Even on a capitalist basis, the capitalists can't make their own system go forward and bring the workers back to work. <coughs> so what does that mean? That means it's bankrupt as a system. This isn't just some episodic, cyclical crisis. It's not even a structural crisis like in the 80s, where they had to restructure industry. What are they going to restructure now? What are they going to restructure? It's not a structural crisis. It's a crisis of property. It's a crisis of the property system, the profit system, the exploitation system, the system which means nothing goes unless some capitalist makes a profit. That has come to a dead end. And it's not rhetoric. It's not rhetoric. You look at it. Now here's a little something to contemplate. Well, I just want to say that a genuine, a true, genuine, working, revolutionary working class party recognizes that its that its that its base, that its 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 creation is is in the working class, and that includes the unemployed, the underemployed, 
the, 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 the disabled, you know, it, the displaced worker, it does not matter. You are, if you, if you have to sell your labor, which everyone in this room does, and the majority of the world must sell their labor to survive, then you are a, you are, you are a working class. So, you, I'm, brother, I'm your brother, and you my sister. Uh, no, uh, I'm your sister, and you my brother. But we are workers of the world, and like Rosenda said, workers of the world unite. That's what you see on the top of Workers World Paper Party all the time. Workers of the world unite. We only have our chains. We only have to break our chains. And you know what? Ultimately, we got to take back the world from, from, the, from the, the, the capitalists. We got to take back our lives from their hands. We got to, we got, and you know what? We might have to take out a few of them. I, you know, I just just want to raise that, but the fact of it is, is that is that the class struggle is at its is 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 is, 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 is always it's always going on. We are always in struggle. We have been in struggle with the working class. We've been in struggle with with the bosses, and you know, for for decades. And it, and in all, and the only thing that we we need to do is to in, is is to bring the kind of Direction and leadership that really this room is. You know what they they, have, they say you need a you need a, a vanguard. Well, Workers World Party in Detroit and and a, and, a, and where we are all over the country is that vanguard. We know that we there we have to bring the class struggle home, bring struggle to the streets, and ultimately that's how we're going to make a difference. And that's what we'll be here for. So if you want to struggle, if you want to live in the real world, we'll see you on Monday and any other day that pe or the workers and oppressed are organized to challenge the bosses and the bankers. We're going to have to deal with them bankers. And, 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 and every single day that passes that we don't challenge them, we give them a little more. Yeah. We're going to challenge them. Every day. Three weeks ago, the Secretary of Labor announced that in order to cure the unemployment problem in America, they would like for them to become farm workers. Now, they, they introduced this now. It came on national TV. They said that in order for, in order to cure the unemployment problem in America, they want unemployed people to become farm workers. I want a response to that. Come on. 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 No, no, you know, the slavery days are over with, okay? And there will never be a return to those days ever again. And I want to be the first black man to say that. Never again. Right. All right. So you never be like that again. Never be like that again.